Morning, morning, morning. We're back with another episode surrounding my Porsche 996, also known as Little Irish. You may remember from my previous instalment that this car was attempting to go air cool by dumping all of its coolant all over my drive. The problem has only been getting worse, so I am just about to hop up to Right Tune, my preferred specialist in Oxfordshire. That's about a two hour drive for me. So I'm equipped with a spare bottle of high quality H2O just to top the car up to hope I can get up there and the guys will be able to replace the coolant expansion tank. I'm also going to be undertaking a lot of preventative maintenance work on the 996 while the car's up there. There's a little bit of a theme for what's going to be a two-parter here surrounding Little Irish because we're going to be looking at being proactive versus reactive when it comes to the maintenance schedule of Porsche 996s. Preservation versus restoration. Restoration in the sense that, well, you're just repairing things that have already gone wrong and returning the car to its former glory. Now, of the plethora of parts going on the car, and there are a lot of parts going on the car, most of them have been supplied by the very good guys and girls at Heritage Parts Centre. They're a classic VW and Porsche part supplier based here in the UK, just along the coast in West Sussex, actually. Some of the parts going on the car that I can talk about this episode include the Myla front drop links for the anti-roll bar, a front under tray, because this car doesn't have one currently, um, and Goodrich stainless steel braided hoses. There's more good news. Heritage Parts Centre offering you 10% off all parts purchased online at heritagepartscentre.com. All you have to do to take advantage of the deal is enter Sibley, S-I-B-L-E-Y, at the checkout for 10% off. That's a rough overview of the madness that's going to be going on with this car. I'm going to limp up to Oxford with my emergency water. Hopefully, we'll get all the maintenance squared away so we can have a jolly good summer in the 996. Let's do it. The 911 did make it to right tune without dumping all of its coolant, so we rolled it into the workshop and let it cool down for a while using the time to inspect the condition of the brake lines, among other bits and pieces. Then Mike and Tony got to work formally emptying the 996 of its coolant, which proved tricky, with corrosion doing justice to battle them all the way. And remember that emergency bottle of water I had? Well, here's its contents coming back out the underside of Little Irish. Replacement of the coolant tank was, of course, a reactive measure, but the rest of the parts going on formed largely proactive maintenance for the 996 to keep things tip top. Here's some of the goodies which were about to go on Little Irish, the majority of which came from Heritage Parts Centre. First up was a new low temp thermostat, which was an easy and cost effective upgrade while we were messing around with the 996's coolant system. I'll discuss the benefits of this in part two. So, an early win, but back to that problematic coolant tank up top, which is about to throw a spanner in the works. Cool, so just while having a little bit of downtime, we'll explain what's happened so far. So, as we know, we need a new expansion tank because the one in there is cracked. Incidentally, the part, as you can see here, brand new from Porsche, 500 pound and 16 pence, including VAT for Gen 1s. For the Gen 2 and 997 Gen 1, 98 pound plus fat, so a bit of a price difference. This as well is a good example of how jobs can escalate. Really common with 996 and obviously the 997 as well, of which shares the same platform. To access the coolant expansion tank, we essentially have to drop the engine a little bit. And that's where things escalated. Dropping the engine did allow for the tank to be removed fairly hassle-free, but this was to the detriment of my engine mounts, which failed in the process. The rubber bushes in both mounts ended up tearing, which is oil-filled, allowing way too much movement thereafter. So, several hundred quid later, they were replaced for new factory Porsche engine mounts. Placing the old and new coolant tank side by side, look at that discolouring by the way, we found the culprit of the leak and I was amazed at how much havoc such a small crack could cause. Then Mike set about installing the new tank and running coolant back into the 996 before reassembling the airbox. In light of a perished front drop link bushing on the near side, I decided to have both sides replaced with Myla drop links, again from Heritage Parts Centre, which come with a two year unlimited mile warranty. Exactly the same as the other chassis parts I fitted a year ago. Then a new front under tray was installed before close of play. That earlier battle with corrosion, plus the failing of those engine mounts, curtailing progress on day one. There's much more to come, but for now, let's have a chat with Right Tune's head honcho, Chris, to understand how and why maintenance work can escalate on these cars so easily. Okay then, we're pretty much done on Little Irish for today, aren't we? Yep. Chris, 
Today was an example of how things can escalate quite quickly. Yeah, yeah, we had a bit of trouble, didn't we? So we were fitting a new low temperature thermostat. Yeah. And well, how many? Well, four four bolts, and uh, one causes a problem. Having to get the heat on it, the oxygen acetylene <laughs> to try and get it apart. You know, it just added a lot more time of what should have been, you know, a relatively simple job. It added a bit, fair bit of time, which you saw, as well as then changing your like, head, header tank. We had to lower the engine down to get the access to do it, and um, essentially your your engine mounts failed on taking them apart having to then replace them. Again, difficult getting them apart. There was a lot of corrosion on there. It was, you know, relatively minor, but... Indicative of what can happen. Yeah, what it? can happen, it added more time to the yeah. job and more expense. The message I'm trying to get across here is to prevent rather than rip em. It's yeah. better to, to do things before they go wrong, because when you wait for things to go wrong, that's when you get bigger bills. Yeah, I mean, for example, one of the things we say to our customers, if you've got the engine out for a reason, um, you know, it could be a, a brake line. There is a brake line that goes over the top of the engine in the gearbox. You, you can sort of fix them sometimes, but often you've got to get the engine out. There's other things that you might want to look at doing at the same time, or a layer separator. Are you going to do a clutch, rear main seal? I mean, obviously to keep the cost down, you just do one thing, but most likely it's like false economy. If in six months to a year later, you've got to have the engine and Box out again to do another small job. It's a bigger bill, but then it's done and you know it's, yeah. it's been done. It's probably, I mean, you've not really got a problem with your car and it's over 20 years old. So it's not that, it's not lasted that badly, has it? So yeah. if you do then do another load of preventive maintenance, hopefully it can be right for another 20 years. I'm going to come back another day and do the brake lines because they all need renewing. Yeah. But they're not too bad at the moment. No, they're not too bad, but I'd, as I said, we looked at them and there's potential problems with bleeding them and Lee getting away today because there's you know, often problems with the, the, bleed, the bleed nipples on the calipers and the pipes themselves due to corrosion. Um, we did try a couple of the, the nipples on the front and three out of the four of them wouldn't come open easily, which then made us concerned. Some rust there, they're not going to let you down in a few weeks. I'd be concerned if you're going to do another winter yeah. or advise you not to. Yeah, yeah. He advised me, but you yeah, still let me. You know. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's his own fault now. Never see him again. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope he's paid his bill. <laughs> um, all right, sound. Look, um, just before we go, there was a really good point that yourself and Mike made earlier on off camera about greasing up bolts. Oh yeah. So yeah, this is something. This is something you can do at home pretty well. So Lee asked us to change his front anti-roll bar drop links, mostly because. The, the rubbers split. And the specialist who'd fitted them before had used grease, alu slip or copper slip, something like that, or any grease really, and it just made the job take about 10 minutes. But without them grease, if they get seized into the, into the upright or the hub, it can take you, where... and that's where it goes wrong, it can take you an hour aside, then maybe potentially creating more damage. You know, we're not looking for work, most of us technicians, we just want to get the job done and get it out. And that just because they put some grease on it made the job easy, easy for us and, you know, cheap, cheaper for you, wasn't it? Yeah. So that's, that's it. So, yeah, if you're doing some maintenance at home, take a bit of time, grease threads, grease what you're working on. Yeah. And you're going to have a much better chance of getting it apart, you know, in Another years to time. come. Yeah, like you say, easier and cheaper in the long run. Yeah. So, yeah, cracking. All right, Chris, we'll, let, we'll get the car down and I'll leave you be. Coming up in part two, the project evolves and there's some bad news. Hi Lee, it's Chris from Rightune. Um, it's got a bit of bad news for you, mate. Unfortunately, we got in the workshop this morning and there was a puddle of brake fluid under the car. 